Brandon Flowers joining us on the Dave Mahoney Show. Brandon, always great to talk to you, my friend. Um, you got a huge tour coming up, and you did a couple of warm-up shows in Las Vegas. Take us through how a couple of warm-up shows at the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan, which would be most people's headlining act, was like for you guys. It was it was thrilling. I mean, we did. Th- I think we did three nights, and it was there was a lot of anxiety, but then there was also this. We kind of settled back in and realized that it was like, okay, we belong, we belong up here. And, and this is our, you know, this is our home turf. And you could really feel the, there was, you know, the celebratory nature of it all, you know, being back after COVID. And yeah, I mean, it was, uh, those are the three fun nights. And you guys are wasting no time. I pulled up your tour schedule for what's to come. And uh, to say you're getting after it would be an understatement. I counted and I might've miscounted because there's so many, 44 shows between now and the end of the year. I mean, you, you guys are all over the place. Yeah. It's a, you know, we've, we haven't played in so long and we, there's a a lot of territory out there and, uh, you know, the demand is there. There's people that, you know, we're, we're playing to bigger uh, shows and in bigger rooms than we have before. And it's kind of a, I don't know. It's kind of a bit amazing. It's really, you know, we just came off the back of a about forty gigs in the UK and Europe, and it was it was a blast. And so, hopefully, America is treat us right. Yeah, I mean, we're we're just so proud of you guys and how you've just continually been turning out great music. I mean, you know, we've talked many times over the years about how, you know, the first time that you heard your song on the radio was on our radio station. And that's just such a right. yeah a part of joy for us, you know, seeing how you guys have continued to grow over the years and just explode. But let's talk about this new single boy that you guys just put out, because it's actually one of my favorite singles that you've ever put out. And I don't know if it's just because I'm at that point in my life where I'm also a dad, but I know this song is, is uh, special to you and has a lot to do with your growing up experience and then also passing that along to your son. So just talk about the inspiration behind boy, if you would. Yeah, it was, um, I just, I have three sons and I, I recently moved back to, to Utah. I had recently moved back to Utah and that was where I, you know, spent my formative years. I was born out in Henderson, but then I, uh, my parents relocated to right in the middle of Utah in this, this, this country town called Nephi. And it was a little bit of an awkward, you know, I think everybody can identify with, with that. You know, a lot, uh, most people can. Um, but, you know, I had an awkward time and, and it was, I felt out of place. I, I came from this big city and I was um, in this, all of a sudden I was in this, you know, really small town and um, I was looking for, for something to, to you know, to, to, to light my path, I guess, because I felt dark there. I, I missed that neon lights and, and, and I did, I really missed being in, in Las Vegas. And, and so I wanted to touch on that feeling of, of, of ice, so a little bit of isolation and a little bit of uh, being an outlier and, 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 and getting, you know, speaking to, to that person and wanting to tell them that, you know, to have patience and, and know that there's more to it than this moment right now. And that, and in my life, I've been really lucky because, you know, um, all of the blessings in my life and, and the fortunate things that have happened to me. But, yeah, so those are the things I look – I call them white arrows, and I talk about them in the song, yeah. And so when you talk about white arrows, is that just kind of those, those guiding moments? Is that, is that what white arrows means? Because you mentioned that several times. Yeah, it could be a moment. It could be a person. It could be a moment. It could be, a, you know, a small victory. It could be, you know, you, you could have – a you could have little ones and big ones and I've had everything in between in my life. And, um, so I get, yeah, it's just send, it's a, just a tender song, but it's got, it's got, a, it's also got some heat that it brings. <laughs> I don't know so, if, uh, you have a whole lot of time to spend online being a father, being a world-class musician, uh, and just, uh, you know, the uh, amount of, uh, time, uh, it must take to look as amazing as you do, because I'm very hair envious of you, mommy, Brandon. Come on. Um, but one of the questions I, I, I have for you is that, I don't know if you saw this last week on TikTok and on Reddit, one of your very early performances uh, that you guys ever performed live of Mr. Brightside went viral. How do you feel about older performances like that uh, coming out, going viral and being exposed to uh, the world who may have never seen those before? Yeah, it's it's kind of inter- it's interesting for me to see. It's, I've seen some videos where you look back and I can you know you see um, my family members and even my even my wife is in some of those early videos when she was my girlfriend. And it's uh, 
it's kind of amazing that 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 kind of technology exists that that, that, that can be spread everywhere. Uh, I'm not, I'm proud of you know of the of the of the the route that we've taken and the way that we've been able to grow. And you can really see that when you when you see those old performances that we had some uh, some work to do. But uh, but yeah, the, the, there was something there. There was a spark there, and obviously we had Mr. Brightside early on, which is uh, kind of wild. When you think back on your career, I mean, you said that you're proud of the path that you've taken, and understandably so. Things have worked out quite well for the killers but you know a lot of the athletes that i've talked to over the years a lot of the musicians they they do look back and they go maybe i would have changed that is there any moment is there anything that you look back on your career and go i would have done this differently huh yeah the pro- probably you know there's i've talked about it before in the in the early days i think i was i was pretty insecure and i overcompensated by sometimes being uh just outright kind of rude and and dismissive and critical of other bands and things like that and uh, it just wasn't i was putting all that negativity in the world and the world has enough of that and i you know i try to i try hard now to be a lot more positive and if, if there's a band like something that i hear that i like i try to reach out to the to the singer or whoever wrote the song you know and and, and i'd rather go that route than the other than the other route how do you find creating now versus creating in the early days of the band? Is there has the process changed? Has it stayed the same? Uh, I mean, is it uh, is it easier? Is it harder? What's different? Yeah, there's you know we came out and I was so lucky because the, the other guys in the band were were a little bit more seasoned than me. I'm a little, you know I'm six years younger than than everybody else, and so they were. I learned a lot from them about putting songs together. It's a, it's a, a common mistake when you're uh, starting a band and you're young is you, you make everything, everything's too long. And, um, there needs to, you know, it needs to, to be, you know, edited and, and things like that. And so I learned so much from, from Mark and Ronnie in particular about that kind of stuff. Um, so that, that kind of thing has become second nature to me now. And then I, and being able to draw on experiences and, and elaborate on things is coming more naturally to me now than it did. I think I was a little bit more vague in the beginning. And some people love that kind of thing and, and don't love the detail that, that can come along with some of the wisdom, I think. But yeah, so I do find it, uh, I still find a big thrill out of you know trying to write a, a great song. Brandon Flowers, our guest today here on the Dave Mahoney Show. Uh, Brandon, a couple of more questions for you. When I when I think about you know you talking about you know the single boy and you know that being in some ways directed towards your own kids, you know they're getting to that age now where it's not a secret anymore that dad's a rock star. Like, do they take an interest to your career, or are they just like, yeah, whatever, dad? Like, go out and go on tour. That's fine. Or is it, <laughs> is it a family affair where they're excited about the idea that you know, hey, my dad is Brandon Flowers. That's pretty dope. Yeah, it's just they're just starting to become a little bit more aware, and you know, and make it through an entire concert and and all of that. So yeah, they, they're they're aware, and every now and then they'll ask a question or you know about a song or something like that. But yeah, but but we try. I try not to be too uh, over the top about it. No, uh, we try to keep it you know a fairly typical routine at home. I remember talking to Drew Brees about that same thing with his kids. And he's like, yeah, they don't care that I'm Drew Brees at all. They just want me to get them an autograph from Odell Beckham Jr. Is there is an artist <laughs> that they're fans of that you're able to go, hey, actually, they're on my label. I can I can get a get something for you if you want. I think I got more, more of like uh, I got my my they'd be more into like a Ronaldo uh, or a Federer uh, or autograph or something like that. Oh, yeah. E- easy ask. Yeah. Just give me a Ronaldo FaceTime. You know, no problem. <laughs> So um, the uh, the show coming up in Las Vegas, let's talk about that. I mean, T-Mobile Arena, we talked about the warm-up shows that you guys had over at the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan, but, you know, coming back to Las Vegas and playing in front of the hometown crowd, it's got to still feel pretty special, right? Absolutely. That's our home. And, T- you know, we opened T-Mobile. I still remember that I was I, – I, I land- I'll never forget to say I landed and I, I got picked up at the airport and this driver was telling me about how Floyd Mayweather was going to have the first event at T-Mobile when they had just broken ground. And he was going to have this fight there and it was going to be the first thing. And, I mean, I, I felt a little hot under the collar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is not going to happen. <laughs> and I called my manager and it was like, we got to be the first thing at this, you know, or this arena. It's like it's just a special thing. 
And luckily enough, it all came together and we were able to open it up. And that was a, an amazing night. Uh, we had Wayne Newton there and Blue Man. and um, But yeah, so we were looking forward to going back. Well, a special request from my wife. She's just hoping for a, a wink or a nod from stage because we're going to be there at the show as well. So she's a big fan. Right, right. <laughs> right. hey, hey, always great to talk to you, Brandon. Uh, congratulations on the success. Love the new single. Uh, the tour is going to be literally around the world with all over the States and Canada and finishing up in Australia to round out 2022. But uh, so excited to have you coming back to Las Vegas and always appreciate you taking some time for us, man. Uh, thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. 